the USS John R. Craig was a gearing-class destroyer of the US Navy, named after the captain of the submarine USS Grampus, which had been lost with all hands in early 1943. She was one of the earlier gearings to be constructed, being laid down in November 1944, launched in April 1945, and commissioned in August of the same year. Because of this, she just missed out on the chance for action in World War II, instead being assigned to the Pacific Fleet and seeing her first operational deployment shuttling Japanese soldiers home from China in 1946. The Korean War saw the ship assigned to Task Force 77 as a carrier escort, uh, before shifting to a shore bombardment role as the forces of the mighty North Korean Navy uh, generally failed to manifest, and what light coastal forces they did have tended to fall afoul of the Iowa-class battleships casting a 16-inch dispel effect. Outside of a couple of periods in San Diego, the John R. Craig would remain active off the Korean coast for the duration of the war, as well as for a while after it, patrolling the 38th parallel to ensure that the tenuous peace was adhered to. She would then alternate between the two sides of the Pacific, taking part in a number of exercises, both internally for US Navy purposes and externally with Allied navies, including the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force and the Taiwan-based Republic of China Navy, until 1962, when she received a FRAM overhaul that would last for about a year. Once the Vietnam War broke out, she would find herself back on wartime duty, this time as a plane guard for the ships operating on Yankee Station. Or in other words, she was a large, heavily armed lifeboat for aircraft that either failed in the flying part of their job description, or else missed the hundreds of feet of aircraft carrier during the landing part of the role. There was also the slightly more exciting search and rescue duty for damaged aircraft that made it out over the ocean before going down, and the most explosive part, more shore bombardment. In the latter role, she used her relatively shallow displacement as a destroyer, compared to cruisers or battleships, to get in quite close and offer extremely accurate point-blank rapid fire. On one occasion, rescuing a US Marine unit and their supporting Vietnamese allies, whilst, incidentally, effectively wiping out a Viet Cong battalion with several hundred five-inch rounds. After her first bombardment tour, as the ship sailed out into the open ocean, her crew checked to see that nobody else was in sight before using the open space of the helipad for an all-hands barbecue, complete with a large consignment of beer that had been sitting sadly neglected on an onshore warehouse. The beer clearly did its patriotic duty in lubricating the crew and improving their morale, since in 1965 her service in shore support missions would earn her the Destroyer Squadron 1 E for Efficiency rating. The next year she would achieve the Marjorie Sterrett Battleship Fund Award, which is apparently given to one ship in each of the Atlantic and Pacific fleets, where that ship represents the best ship of its type. But in 1972, the Viet Cong struck back, deluging the ship with 105mm fire from captured South Vietnamese coastal defence positions while the ship was close to the beach, aiming at targets further inland. This sent shrapnel pinging across the deck from near misses, as well as landing a number of hits that started fires as the ship withdrew. The damage included a loss of control to the aft 5-inch mount, which somewhat reduced their ability to counter battery, along with fire, flooding, and loss of control in the steering compartment, and perhaps more disastrously, a fire in the Asarok magazine. Luckily, most of the shrapnel from that hit took chunks out of the protective casings of the torpedoes that were stored in the magazine, narrowly avoiding the rocket motors that were a few feet away, which would have been significantly worse for the ship if they'd been hit. A near miss also managed to cut the halyard line, greatly upsetting the signalman, who no longer had anywhere to fly his flags. After the action, it turned out that one piece of shrapnel had gone through the ASROC launcher in a perfect position to set off a rocket motor. Only by sheer luck, it went through the one empty cell, the equivalent of winning a round of eight-shooter Russian roulette when there were seven rounds loaded. A final bit of damage control was enacted, as mu much of the crew's privately bought stereo equipment, which had been purchased in the Philippines, had been stowed in a supply locker that ended up flooded with salt water. 
And so, as soon as various parts of the ship had stopped being on fire, the crew set up a human chain which ran all the stereo equipment through the showers, then dried it with all the hot air blowers that they could find aboard, following which the various men aboard who were trained in electronic maintenance definitely earned their keep as they took every single piece of equipment apart and cleaned it thoroughly. Although power was briefly knocked out, the John R. Craig endured the battering and would eventually make it back to port where she was patched up, finding herself back on the front line the next day. However, the next year, as more modern ships came into the US Navy in large numbers, she would be turned into a training ship, in which role she served until 1979, when she was decommissioned, following which she was used as a target, being sunk off California during a sink in June 1980. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.